welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is We're All Gonna Die on YouTube. Occasionally I make celebrity makeup tutorials as well as lifestyle videos. Today I'm gonna go ahead and make a video on Lily Rose Depp. I have a whole playlist on Lily Rose Depp. I wasn't sure what video I would do next, but I decided on the Met Gala look because so many people were looking it up. But let's go ahead and get started. I do want to start off by saying that the light will go away eventually, <laughs> sorry. I also don't have a pink top and I didn't get a chance to go look for one. And I also went to Ulta to pick up some things. Hopefully this is that was a successful haul. And I also have Lily on my laptop. I've already done my base and I've already done concealer. So typically the, the concealer and the base that I end up doing end up being like the same ones that I've always used. So let's go ahead and keep going with the contour because that's next. I'm going to show you guys the product. And while I'm putting on the contour, I want to go ahead and talk about today's subject. Typically, I'll just use the contour for the nose. So because it's like a neutral color and this is specifically for contour. So let me go ahead and do that. I typically, this is like a boring process, like I swear I've done this in like, so many of my other videos. And also this is what I'm using for bronzer. I literally forgot to pick up a different product. It's just one from Physicians Formula and it's just cause like she is so bronzed up in these pictures that I'm seeing of her. Let me see real quick. Guys, I am trying to find a person that like updates Lily Rose Depp stuff. Does like updates on Lily Rose Depp, but like shows like the makeup. Cause this one specifically, Okay, this light is really bothering me, but I don't have, I have to be somewhere later, so I don't have time to wait. But this one, this specific makeup look was done by, you guys probably even know, something Gutierrez, I forgot, Martin. And I think he's done her makeup look before. I might have even mentioned him before in my other videos, but I honestly just like forgot. Also like updates about my past videos. Okay, like honestly, like these are kind of like my favorite videos to make because I love, if you've never been, if you've never seen any of my videos only, um, I try not to make them traditional. Like celebrities tend to get a lot of views, right? And I typically like, I really like her, her and her, her makeup style, I guess. And I also like to talk about psychology and I don't know, I thought like I could just like mix and match the two. And when I did do that, the first video just like did so well and I got so much great feedback because I'm, I did psychology and this in one. I think it looks good enough. Like it has to be overly pronounced. I'm gonna lose my mind because of this. Like I'm literally gonna lose my mind. I've made these kinds of videos before. I have a whole playlist. I really enjoy Lily's makeup looks and her like I think she's really cool definitely not like a fan like I don't hate her or anything I just I don't know I'm not like really a fan I don't really know too much about her and celebrities tend to get like so many more views but I also like to talk about psychology and initially when I made my first video and I've said this before and I've said this so many times in my videos where if you feel like something's missing on the internet maybe it's a sign that you should do that make a video on that make a post about it you know, create an account, whatever, a blog, anything like that. Now we're gonna go in with a bronzer. And she always has this like very pronounced line. I don't, I forgot how much, how strong this is. So we're gonna see. She literally has this like here. One of the reasons why I haven't made the video, um, another video by Lily is because I wasn't sure like, okay, what would my next video even be? So since my last video on Lily too, I w had gone through can cancer treatment, if you guys haven't seen that. And it's already ended and you know, that's like a whole like long wind. I have like, honestly, I have videos on it if you guys wanna see, cause that's too long of a story, sorry. I will say that this bronzer is like super like red. I don't know if you can tell. And I do have somewhere to be bef like later and like I never wear this much makeup. Not that there's anything wrong with this much makeup, I'm just like not used to this. It's very red, like you could just kind of tell, I don't know. I'm gonna top this off with the powder at the end. And I literally have no idea what this is, like do my cats beat me up at night? I don't know. This is just gonna be a translucent powder that I'm adding. This tends to just honestly like calm down the colors, so 
I'm just gonna add this all over. I have really oily skin, so this is important for me. Honestly, typically I also practice doing this look before. I have not this time around. Also today I was wearing, so like, okay, I don't have a pink piece, but today what I was wearing, I was like, I feel like Lily would wear this. I'll insert a picture, but it's, she wears like a lot of flats and always her Levi's and yeah, I'm gonna do a second layer of like, bronzy queenness since that last video like yeah i've been doing a lot better i found something that i want to talk about so we're going to talk about psychology if you guys like interesting psychology stuff that i've talked about so much about like celebrity culture then like the dark side of hollywood things like that just to kind of keep this interesting if you're not if like i remember someone left a comment and it's like if you don't want to watch these kinds of things then don't but today we're going to talk about something a little bit different than we normally do and that is Synanon. If you guys have no idea what that is. Um, I wanted to talk about this because I've just gone through this whole like dark hole of learning about cultic cultures. Okay, we moved again. So you know what? Something I was saying is that like it was really hard for me to find this makeup look in some of the fan base fan accounts that I follow on Instagram because they just it was like a far away picture so like this makeup look was a little hard to find. Why are we talking about cults? Are you guys ever interested? Like, were you guys ever interested in like why people that followed Hitler followed him? Like some of the things that he said was so crazy and just horrible. And it's like, how did he have this like large following? And are you guys ever curious like, why does my best friend love this guy so so much when he is such a jerk to her or why you can have a friend and i know a lot of you guys are young why you can have a friend that is so manipulative and doesn't feel good in your stomach for some reason something's telling you in your in your gut to like leave this friendship but you just don't know how and you can't pinpoint why what they're doing is hurting you I also feel like I look like a cat right now, but you know, that's off topic. I'm gonna do my makeup while in the background, I'm telling you guys this, like a short story, a summary version of Synanon. And this was basically a cult of like weird looking people. I mean, they weren't weird looking, but like they all had their bald shaped heads and why that was and why they all kind of dressed the same and why it attracted so many celebrities at that time. As far as for blush, this one's a little bit more purple than hers is and for this makeup tutorial what they ended up doing this is by milani by the way what they ended up doing with her makeup is they really brought the blush a lot higher it's very like e-girl to me like it's i mean i don't think lily's an e-girl but like i feel like the culture is just our society is so influenced by e-girl stuff and I honestly, I have not practiced this. I'm not even looking at a mirror. I'm looking at the viewfinder. You know, when I first saw this video, I was, I'm sorry, this, the picture of this look, I was like, I feel like it looks like all of her other looks. I don't know if I want to do this one. And then I was like really analyzing like how they were doing things for this makeup look. And I was like, hmm, it is a little bit different. Maybe I wonder if like Lily requests her looks to be similar. Or what what I'm doing by the way is stippling this blush on the back of my hands and then transferring it super high up to the cheek but like not in the center maybe a little bit in the center but more towards the back I mean underneath the eye yeah I don't this makes me look sickly but I mean whatever this is what Lily's makeup artist did I want to start off this by saying Synanon I got this off of Several things, Wikipedia, My Favorite Murder, and Trust Me Podcast. If you have not listened to those podcasts, especially the Trust Me one that's specifically on cults, and I love that podcast. It's cult survivors do, talking to other cult survivors. Synanon was founded by Charles E. I always forget his, how to pronounce his name. Diederich. Diederich. Yes, Charles. In 1958. It was basically the counterculture, like leaving the 50s, right? It was initially very popular because of something they called the game, the Synanon game. It was also popular within the celebrities, like I mentioned earlier, and also started in the West Coast 
so somewhere in California, I feel like a lot of the cults, I feel like start in California, like what's up with that? Someone in California talked to me. So Charles was a reformed alcoholic and a member of AA, but didn't like that the AA was not inclusive to any other addictions besides you know, an alcohol addiction. His origin story was so interesting. I remember it was something along the lines of like his dad left at such a young age, like I think when he was eight or something like that. And his brother ended up dying from I think the flu, which was actually pretty common back then. The mom kind of made him like the man of the house at such a young age. Eventually after the, you know, after being upset about the AA thing, some doctor, <laughs> I forgot what it was, okay, like, this is not really professional. I'm just like, you know, story time basically. At the time, like addiction was so, no one understood it so much. But a doctor thought that maybe LSD could cure this addiction. And after Charles took LSD, he ended up deciding that he would start his own program where it was for addicts of all different kinds. And he ended up growing a small following in the beginning when he started all of these other uh, people that didn't know where to go, but they had these addictions that were non-alcoholic related They thought that they would join to see Hopefully see results. Initially I had started as a two-year program but changed for life because after two years He was seeing that a lot of members after they left the two, you know from the two-year program They ended up still relapsing and that was bad business bad business for him because he said this is the only thing that was working for addicts at the moment that it had like an 80 percent non-relapse cure for addiction and we're gonna do brows next but basically for lily and how she does her brows and i'm gonna try to go in with a light hand because she has like very fair brows for this but basically there's always like a sing like a line running through here something to kind of it's almost like a triangle like this and then in the front then it's something like this and i would say like get a lighter color than what i have because hers is way more like taupey lighter also like she's gotten a little bit more blonde over the summer just feather this part in if that makes any sense at all do you guys kind of see that I did that. I hope you did. They kind of look something like this. Hers are just like a little bit more higher than mine are. <laughs> Sorry, I sneezed. Hers are a little bit higher than mine are, but this will work for me. I do also want to quickly mention as I was doing them, I always think it's so important to go in with one base color and then do another color, even if it's like a little bit different. Even though these made them, my eyebrows darker because I just have darker hair. A gel product kind of gives it more texture and it adds a different sort of dimension when it's a different color. What are we feeling for the eye? It's like a white pinkish, which I have the perfect color, which this is a dirty palette, but it's, where is it? This one, it almost looks like a white and it probably looks white on camera. This is a white, this is the actual color. I'm gonna go in with some of that and I don't even know where this palette's from. The Rock, it's the Pro palette. I probably should have put a primer, but I didn't. Then next, we're gonna go in with a brown and then we're gonna mix the, we're also gonna mix the brown that I'm gonna put in the crease with a pink. So let me do one eye and then we'll be back. Okay, so I did this eye. Also, I messed up by the way, you guys. But let's do the next eye. And I want to show you guys also the eyeliner that I got. It's from Tarte and it's called Double Take and it's in the black. One end is gel, the other one's um, regular like liner, which I actually honestly loved because the other one that I had before was like horrible, honestly. This is actually kind of a hard look to get down. Like it's in between, in different pictures, right? It looks brown and mauve and in other pictures, it looks reddish. So I just did brown and red. I realized this, that it's sort of like a cut crease. So we're gonna go ahead and try to do the other side. So just follow along. I'll show you kind of the what I'm using. So how they ended up making money was they sold promotion, promotional items and that generated 10 million per year, apparently. <laughs> Charles was also able to use his media and Hollywood associates to promote Synanon. One of the reasons why a lot of people in Hollywood would join Synanon, the popular mu musicians, was because a lot of them were also addicts and they also wanted a solution for their problem. 
So that's why it generated so much popularity within, I think it was like a lot of jazz artists and someone from like the Twilight Zone. I don't remember what that story was. Basically like that really helped them. And that seems to be like a theme that you hear so much in other cult stories, I guess. Like I remember the guy from, oh my gosh, what's his name with the weird teeth? Tom Cruise. He is a part of Scientology and I'm not saying that Scientology is a cult, even though some like ex-members have said so. They use him a lot to promote like their religion. And also I'm like, I'm just like speaking, you know, whatever I want. Like I'm not a professional null or anything like that. I think this is just fun. In World of Wars, like remember he spoke to the director and he got approved to set up a table to talk about Scientology and see if anyone else wanted to join. When you put someone hot in front of, you know, anything really we feel like we can trust them because they're beautiful hot whatever good looking it's such a mind f if you know what i mean anyways you know because of all of the, the glamorization of this cult with that money that they made they purchased a large hotel in santa monica and eventually they invited outsiders so basically outsiders were people that were not that weren't addicts basically and because of how they were being promoted on tv and media like i think that's what really drew in other people there was some sort of mystery and exclusiveness to this cult right i mean it wasn't a cult then or it wasn't called the cult then honestly like people thought that they were doing like such a good thing like this was the only thing at the time that was working for addicts or at least that's what a lot of people thought because they were lying about the numbers about how many addicts if they were actually doing well and in addition to bringing outsiders they were also bringing juveniles from the justice system that was off of wikipedia and we'll get back to that in a second but the game basically is a version of talk therapy it starts off with boring questions about your day etc etc other questions like that and eventually it leads to being criticized by other members and humiliated to expose your innermost weakness basically it broke you down inside it's so funny because like this seems to be like a running theme in other cults they tend to do the same kind of thing it's funny like hearing other cult members talk about it because they say like this is, like aggressive sort of group therapy they end up saying that in the moment it feels although like hearing it from the outside inside it feels like they say like it, you get an adrenaline rush and in addition it feels like everyone could see you like you can't understand like why this is wrong in a way it like breaks down your ego or at least that's what the leaders will call it or say it kind of makes you feel like you're doing better you know it's like i don't have an ego any but really it's like it stops you from thinking for yourself anyway so eventually just like kind of ended here they ended up moving to a ranch in tamales i think that's where it was i'm pretty sure that's where it was and this is where the whole like shaved head and wearing overalls everyone dressed the same the reason why they shaved their head too was to show solidarity with the men in there another thing that they tend to do they tend to make everyone kind of equal i think or at least seem that way you know and that honestly like the whole story with the ranch so crazy and manipulative and also like to get back to the juveniles it was crazy what they did with them because and this is i'm wrapping it up here but they reached out to i think like prison cells or whatever to see if they had of any juveniles that they didn't know what to do and because they at this point they were getting great recognition as far as like being able to like turn other adults lives around they gave them juveniles right and i'm thinking like they gave it to them because they wanted to keep expanding to to people that were younger i guess to to have more people in their cult i guess none of the juveniles wanted to do the game but they were definitely forced and if they didn't want to after they started rebelling because they didn't want to do the game Sinanon would force them to march in the middle of the night after a while because these juveniles did not want to play this horrible game Sinanon ended up changing their tactics so at the beginning it was one of their rules i guess that they were founded on was no violence but they ended up changing it because these juveniles they, they couldn't force them to play this game and they would end up being beat not to death i don't think i don't think anyone died from that but they were beat pretty badly and a lot of these juveniles like they would run to like in the middle of the night they would get up and es try to escape and some of them did and they would go to the neighboring ranch which was crazy because this was so far out from everything and they were able to some of them were able to escape to the neighboring ranch and i forgot the name of the ranch gambaninis i think that's what it was it was like a wife and a husband such an empowering story but the husband ended up giving money to these these boys to, to get money to go back home to their parents. There's stories of like the parents, the mothers, you know, writing letters to these uh, this couple that would that put their life at risk because at this point, like this 
cult had so much money and so much influence and they did some horrible things to people that tried to mess with this cult they, the mothers of these kids that would return back home they would send letters to the gambinis i think that's how it was pronounced and say like thank you so much for bringing back my son back to us like you know we never thought that we'd see him again because again like being in this cult was for life i also just find found a different picture of her her liner is thinner so i do want to say make sure that if you want to follow her exact thing it's like a very thin line. And the color that she has is sort of like on the eye in the crease. It is warmer than what I did. It's a little bit more red. Obviously, Lily's makeup artist did way better than I did. I think this is sort of esque the vibe. Now we're going to move on to lips. For the lips, I actually purchased something from Anastasia because I could not find the color that I wanted. And then this is the KKW Beauty Nude 1. I think this is pretty good. Hey guys, it's editing me and I just quickly just wanted to mention that Lily also had a bright pink on her inner corner. I don't know how I forgot or didn't see that in any of the pictures I had saved, but it was there. Now what I'm gonna do is also she's wearing like hoops. I'm not. She has like a few long strands. <laughs> this feels like this looks to me super like we're gonna go to prom but i guess that's kind of what met gala is like not actually prom but like thing like this you guys like no one's gonna see that i'm actually using a regular clip <laughs> Guys, so I actually filmed this before, but I don't know what happened to the clip. I also have the hiccups right now, so just bear with me. But let's basically talk about what tactics cult leaders, manipulators use on you to take advantage of regular people like us so that we can all be aware of what their tactics are. Let's go ahead and briefly go through some of the tactics to look out for. Leaders tend to have a natural charisma. They call themselves or people call them the truth tellers. Uh, sleep deprivation because that opens you up to being controlled. Another one is love bombing and promising too many things for the future. A major one that a lot of psychologists add in. Another one is isolation. This is something that psychologists tend to agree on. They isolate you from your friends and your family so that the only ideas and they also stop you from having your own thoughts but so the only ideas that you hear and the only opinions that you hear is from this person not from your friends that can give you like an outsider's perspective. They'll lead you to give up your personal lifestyle again super involved with their life and their culture their cults whatever they're following also they just kind of make you follow their belief a lot of the times doesn't even make sense even a lot of cult leaders will kind of just adjust the belief over time to just kind of develop and evolve with their lies that at this point don't even make sense anymore. These cult leaders are not even professional and they still claim that they are professionals. They stop you from trusting yourself. Another one is separating you from the outside world. This like us versus them mentality. Another one is feels like an exclusive group. This is another thing that, that they were talking about. In cult culture, there's this big thing on like language, saying words that other people don't really understand. And this was mentioned in one of the podcasts that, that I was listening to, but these exclusive words and the language that these cults use it creates this exclusivity i know that a lot of scientology members hearing them talk it sounds like a whole other language just because of the terminology that they use which is so interesting but it's just like another tactic that feels kind of fun and it's also like the easiest way to make it seem exclusive you know you're not having to buy anything or anything it's just making up a couple of different words the thing that i heard from that podcast that i keep mentioning cultish language is to obscure meaning suppress individual thoughts versus is at work when you use specific words for specific things that you do that is meant to make communication clearer and easier that is sort of like the difference some of the language even is to end any further thinking i don't know like what is the meaning of life is there is the god that you're talking about really true sometimes it'll be a specific word or just like specific languages and that kind of thought process of oh you know i don't know it's just limiting beliefs that you're experiencing right now something along the lines of that that's another tactic that they use where they try to shut down your individual thinking by saying phrases like i think it's also so important to look at these things that I'm mentioning, try to see your interactions with other people in a different light. Like, are they manipulating me? The reason why I decided to talk about 
cult basically like a cult doesn't have to be a group it could be you know a friend or your family or even you know your boyfriend that's like the most common cult sorry i'm trying to put my hair up real quick but i think it's so interesting to not get sucked in a cult like how do you avoid getting into anyone that is manipulated manipulative whatever and how do you take control back the brightest minds and like there was a specific name i don't remember who it was the, the score like the highest and iq test they talk about how like the brightest minds were a mix of both skepticism and optimism like there has to be a little bit of both where you know some of the brightest mind i forgot what his name was but he believed in aliens but he didn't think that aliens were going to attack that same day or in the week or something like that people that discuss in these podcasts which they bring professionals all the time it's like almost like you have to be both like you have to have a lot of the people that joined cults and were cult survivors and that were still able to live a life even after uh, realizing that they were being brainwashed was a lot of the things that these people ex uh, cult members had in common was optimism that's how they were able to believe in, in all of these lies that the cult leaders would say and that's how they were able to still feel like i can have a life outside of this which is kind of beautiful in situations like this like even you know being love bombed or you know with an ex or something like that like that feels so shameful it's almost like why didn't I see this before? And even like in a friend. Lastly, I just want to say that I do think it's important to learn about cults. A lot of people think like I, I will never be sucked into, you know, a cult or I could that could never be me. I could if, you know, back in the day that wouldn't have been, been me with uh, Hitler. Like how could people be so brainwashed or even, you know, impairment schemes where people try to suck you in and at first you don't know what it is. You think that that would never be you, but really the people that think that that would never be them tend to be the people that get sucked into these cults because they're not able to see the signs of manipulation and like again cult could be just like a bad relationship and bad friendship bad you know relationship in general so like it's important to know the signs of these so this trusting side of you one of the better sides of you won't be turned into the worst trait of yours anyway we're gonna conclude the video here i know that that was so long i don't know how i feel about this look and i have to go out later and i don't think i'm gonna keep this is a little too much like i'm gonna go to a wedding i hope you guys enjoyed this video i just really like talking about like psychology and things like that and if you haven't seen my other videos go ahead and check them out i will see you guys super duper soon let me know what you guys want to see next like which makeup tutorial i was thinking of doing the one from her birthday where she has a black cut crease that would be fun i know it'd be so challenging and i think i've been recording for like two hours so yeah i'll see you guys <laughs> very soon yeah subscribe if you guys want to have a great day